So welcome everyone to today's webinar, where we're gonna be breaking down kind of landing pages and how to improve conversion rates, both in terms of messaging, layout, and photography, and how that all wraps together to really tell your story about your company, your product, and uh, relate to customers. So I invited on Carrington Crothers, who is the founder of Prospect Street Studios, and to really walk through this. I love Car uh, Carrington because she has an eye for not just photography, which she focuses on, but also how to effectively share the message that you want to share with customers and what are the things that they are looking at they are going to convince them to buy. Because ultimately, you know, it's only what we're kind of sharing with customers that we have to convince them to, to purchase. So what we're going to do for the day is start off, Carrington's just going to do a quick intro, but then we'll jump into a landing page kind of breakdown for Joyful Co, my company, and we'll start there. And then we will then get a chance to walk through your websites if you want to, Carrington, take a look at those. And so as she mentioned, once we start that, jump off of mute, she'll probably have some questions as she's looking through it. And ultimately you can come away with some practical tips on how to improve your sites. So with that, I'll pass it over to Carrington. Thanks so much for joining today. Feel free. I'd love for you to give just like a quick intro of what you are what you do and how you kind of view the world. And we can jump into the Joyful Co. teardown after that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jordan. So a little bit deeper from what Jordan just said, but my name is Carrington Crothers and I own Prospect Street Studio, which is an e-commerce photography agency. So I specialize in working with CPG brands, ideally in the emerging stage. And I look at how you use imagery as a sales tool, not just as a pretty picture to post on your social media or to share with the world, but how do you use that image to make somebody hit buy now? How do you make it so that image makes people want to scroll on your website or go to the shop page and spend a little bit more time interacting with your brand? And I've spent a lot of time learning about how to use this kind of information to increase your conversion rates reduce your return rates, just help really get your viewers to be educated and understand what your brand is and having to read less. Cause we all know no one really wants to read. So we can use imagery to explain all of those descriptions and the bullet points. Let's get as much of that into the imagery as possible and make it stupid simple for your customers to really just understand what your brand is and why you should be, be buying it, right? So that's a little bit about me. And I'm always happy to connect with all of you at the end of this. I will be going through this fairly quickly. I'll start off with Jordan's and then we're going to go through. We had 11 website submissions. So I'm going to be going through all of those. And I do take this from a candid perspective. So I will be telling you guys, all right, this is what I see that I think you're doing really well. This is where I feel like we can improve. And if you guys have questions on it later, we can always do a deeper dive. I'm totally open to all of that. Awesome. I love that. And for those who just joined us, I put it in the chat. But if you want Carrington to take a look at your website, drop your landing page or URL into the chat, and we'll be going in order that we receive them. If you just joined, you might not see the websites who are listed before you. So don't worry, we didn't skip over you. Just know that there are some other ones that might not show up. All right, Carrington, you can take that away. All right. So I'm going to start with, where are we at here? Wild Orchards, I'll do a screen share. You want to do Joyful Co. first? Oh, Joyful Co. I'm so sorry. Joyful Co. All right. So when we come to the Joyful Co. website, the first thing I'm like, all right, I love that it is bright, it is inviting, and it's very on brand. The image shows you exactly what the product is supposed to be receiving. And it also is allowing space for all the text over here. So when you're creating the imagery, this image is really intentionally made to have open white space on the left. And that's allowing them to put in that call to action and those buttons. So being really intentional about what that composition and the layout is, is really important. So the other part of this that is done really well is the fact that the box is angled. And that is also helping gear your eye down, which will allow people to say, all right, I want to scroll. The one thing I would change on this homepage, right where we're coming in, is I would shrink this free shipping area. And the reason I want to shrink this free shipping area is because I want to see the text down here 
where these icons are. You shrink that, we can see the entire image and all of the text. So if you did not have that and we just scrolled up a tiny bit like that, you see it all. We're just kind of losing what that says. And I do think that's really important information for what you're offering to people. The other thing I really love about this is that you have a hand. Any type of human element that you can add really does help connect with people. People connect with people. So any type of human element you can add into the photos really does go a long way. Harrington, one question that you mentioned in our conversation the other day is like angling products in the photography. How do you feel about this? I just realized after that, right, it's angled towards the right versus being angled towards the left or I guess center. So usually I would say I want it angled towards what you want them to read. So I would usually tell you to have this angle to the left, and I would love to see how that looks, but actually angling it to the right is not bothering me in any way because I feel like it's not dramatic. And it's also kind of mimicking the way that your text is, so it works out. And it's also helping you want to scroll a little bit more. So there's a give and awesome. take right there where I'm like, we can either have it angled left, so now the box is facing the copy that's over here, or in this sense, I think it's giving a different benefit where it's allowing a little bit more space for your text. Then if we angled it the other way, this would probably get really tight down here. And it's also helping from the eye to be like, all right, I could we can keep scrolling, right? Because like this, the ribbon also feels like it's falling. So it's really giving the viewer an idea to be like, all right, let me scroll, let me learn more. Does that answer your question? Yeah, perfect. Love that. Perfect. All right, so I love that once we scroll down, you get right into a miniature shop area. And it's very consistent, which I think is great with what we're seeing with the boxes. There are a handful of inconsistencies that I do see here that I would call out to say, hey, let's work on that lighting. So all of your boxes are in person the exact same color. Due to your white balance and the color, I don't think any of these look the same. That is... When somebody goes to buy the hungry box and maybe it receives looking like the joyful box, they're going to be like, wait, is this what I purchased? Because I thought it was a different color. From my perspective, this looks as if each box is a different shade of orange, which would be for each category, which is actually not the case for joyful code. They're all the same. So that's something we can work on. I can try and even help you with that. If you want to change the white balance of the boxes, we can look into that. But that would be my biggest call out right there. My second is consistency with your shadows. This one over here has a shadow. This doesn't have a shadow. This one had a shadow, shadow, so on and so forth. You guys get the point. And then hands. I would love to see it. Like the hands really don't bother me, but if we have one that doesn't have hands for this specific box, just because none of the others have them. So consistency is really big with helping the viewer just understand. If things are really jumbled, that can make it harder for somebody from a viewing perspective to understand what is going on. So I take all of my photo shoots from three different categories. So the first one is educate. And I look at that as, all right, what is the image educating the viewer on? The second is inspire. Are you like ever the person who walks through the store and like, oh, I really want to touch that. Or I want to try that because that looks really cool. And it's like, you get really excited. I call that the inspire or the ooh factor because I like to say that. But if you can hit both of those points, that helps you get to the sales section. And that's section three. That's where we want to go. And if you can educate and inspire your viewer, you have a better chance of getting them to add to cart. So with this, we are hitting the educate. We're learning about what is in the box, how they're going to be laid out. There's all of that. They look really nice. But then there's a lot of questions that are also coming with it that I was just going over earlier. Does that make sense, Jordan? Yeah, totally makes sense. I think, right, if someone like going through it, I'm just like, oh, yeah, let's like get the images up. And then when you mention the color balance, it's like all I can see now. <laughs> yep. That's going to drive you nuts now, isn't it? Mm hmm So we, as we scroll down, I love this photo. You know, I love this photo. My thing is going back to kind of what you were asking me about before with angles. So we have three people in this photo. 
part of me, because this woman is the most prominent, I want this image to be on the right side because it's it would be she's so dominant in this photo. I want her to read the text. I want to know what she's looking at. And I want her to look here because that's where my eye is going to go. When you always use people in photos, especially if it's one person, you're always going to look at what in the direction that they're looking. In this case, you have three. So you're going to look in the direction of the most dominant person. And because she's the only one who's not cut off and she's in the center, that's really for that split second, that's the direction you're going to look. So use that to your advantage and just have them look at the text you want them to read. But overall, I think that's a great photo and I really wouldn't change anything about it. Yeah, I mean, this is why I also recommend, right, like knowing where your images are going to be and the information that you're providing so you can give that direction because you're not always going to know, right? Like, or the photographer's not going to know. They're like, oh, have the person looking left or right based on the layout of where that image is going to live. And a lot of times, like, you won't even know to think about that until after you place the image and you're like, oh, I wish it was a little bit better on this. Yeah, no, definitely. And oftentimes I will ask to speak with web designers because I want to know what the process is, what is being changed, what are we doing? And if they don't know, I will do my best to give them both options, a left option and a right option. So then you have the, that ability to, and the flexibility to place it where you need it to go and have it actually be beneficial. So that's always just conversation. If you don't know, more the merrier. And then if you do know, have that conversation. So then you can actually be really strategic about it. Perfect. Not image related, but I love the icons. They're adorable. I like the customer part. I wouldn't say change anything on that. That is kind of what it is. They're very candid. Your how it works section. We're going back to the box color. We definitely need to fix that. These are three new colored boxes again. <laughs> but overall, I do think that works. The layout makes sense. For select, I would say have a conversation like, does that really depict select? Or is there another way you can show it with like other boxes? And then send and receive. So for me, I feel like send could be more shipping related. Receive could be more like of an unboxing shot, which you kind of have here. So like you're close with this, but I do think we could take it to one, take it to the next level to really say like, all right, what do these words mean? And what are we trying to show? All three of these images individually are made. They're great. Other than the color on this one, we need to fix that color, but they're well laid out. They're really talking to your target audience. They're appealing. They really help the eye go through the photo. So as individual photos, they're really, really nice. And they're also on brand. I would just say, are these the most beneficial beneficial photos to put in those spots? And that's like a call out too, because I think this was developed before we had additional photos. And so we were like using what we had, mm -hmm. but right, that was over a year ago. And we haven't gone back to update these, even though we've gotten new photos. So that's always a good reminder. Yep. Luis had a comment in the chat asking, should his background be orange since the boxes are also orange or should it be a different color? So throughout the site, you do change with your shade of orange. Right here is very orange heavy. You could benefit from switching and doing a lighter color, but it also doesn't completely bother me since we there is still some contrast. But you could switch it if you want to see how it looked and say, hey, maybe we try it for a month with a different color and do we see any difference with how customers are engaging? Awesome. Love it. Scrolling down. These are all great. These are mostly like you're kind of can a mix of candids and mix of professional. And it's just kind of like a nice gallery right there because we're also so low on the website for your homepage. This is the part where I'm not as stressed about it. We have gotten somebody to this point they already like you for a reason. So making sure at least that they're all quality photos, which they are. Other than that, the variety is amazing. This one, I, going back to, I think you said it was Louise who mentioned the color. This section right here, that bothers me because that is almost completely blended. 
where up here we are getting some form of contrast, especially with like the white border. This one, I, I love this photo. I feel like it does match the aesthetic more of this center one. But it's it shows the box. It's giving you an idea of like what the product is inside of it. And again, you're still hitting your target audience with the models. And I like the interaction between the two. So overall, I mean, like you do have very strong imagery. Your biggest struggle is your color consistency. Does that give you a good overview of your homepage? Yeah, totally makes sense and love it. Do you want me to go over it. Else on this? Nope. Site? And now I have like a to do list of stuff to, I think that's a good thing. Like some things are like fairly simple yeah. updates, but they can make a, a big difference. So definitely appreciate it. Perfect. All right. All right. Should we hop in the Michaels and yeah. Wild Orchard? All right. Wild. Thanks everyone for the comments in the chat, even just talking and asking questions. This is great. Keep it going. Yeah, if anyone is, Jordan, if you wouldn't mind just telling, reading that off to me, because I'm not monitoring that at the same time. Yep, I will do that. All right. Michael, you are up with Wild Orchard. All right, so when I come to your homepage, one thing I will say from when I was talking about Jordan's, he has a really thick banner right here. You have a thin banner, which is giving you more space to provide more information and imagery on your hero. Where we're losing it is right in this section of your banner because that's so wide. So we're cutting off the bottom of your product here. I want to see like almost the, basically the majority of what's important in this photo, we don't see it. So we want to bring that up to show the customer what they're being received. Why are we at this website? What are we looking at? What are we buying? So because it's really just showing the shadowed background, we're missing that education point that I was talking about. I really come here and I'm like, all right, different kinds of matcha, cool. Now I really have to scroll and now I have to do additional work to learn a little bit more about you. My other, oh, oh I didn't want that to switch yet. Can I go back? Let's go back. So I would say shrink if you can, shrink either this hero section or crop in your photo, because this is a lot of additional space up here, crop it out and just bring the whole image up so we see it when you come to the homepage. I also do not think this is a totally focused image. So I would look into that if you have one that is sharp because this looks really soft to me. And you definitely want your hero to be as sharp and clean as possible. And then we're also cutting off the bottom. So whenever you can, try not to cut off your product because that is the most important thing that is being sold on this website is the product. So let's try and make sure that that always stays in the frame on where we're placing it. And if we cropped out this top part here, you can probably fix that entire problem. And then I would say when we come here, I wanna get a little bit more information about like who is Wild Orchard? Why should I buy it? Give me a little more education and insight to who this brand is, because just coming here, I'm like, all right, I don't know much, right? I want to be intrigued. I want to want to learn more. So taking that into perspective, do we want to see like the product on the inside, it being maybe a hand that's actually going to open the product? What do we want that really key hero image to be? And if you guys don't know it, the main image on your website is called a hero image. And it's really the most important image because that's going to be what attracts the attention and gets people to want to scroll. So coming up with an image right here that educates and inspires is really important. And then you do have some others right here. So same comment here. If we can see all of this, now we hit different packaging, which is interesting. Or is this same packaging in a box? I'm not 100% sure. I'm assuming it's just a box and those are just circles or cylinders. But I would say if you can move your copy over here to the left, bring this image up and you have plenty of space over on the left to still have your copy, then you can see the entire product and still get your text and your call to action to be seen. And I would check if it's something on the back end because this also looks soft to me. 
but when I was looking at your website earlier, there are others that look really crisp. So I don't know if that's a setting or if the images are soft. All right, as we scroll, I'm assuming that is a video. So it takes us a bit to get to a point where we can see a store. So when we went through Joyful Co, we scroll very little before we see, all right, here's some of the product. When we come to yours, we have to go through some quotes, some videos, some feedback before we hit the store. I would just say, bring this up. Tell people right away what it is you're selling. And then when we come right to your store page, I love when people do ingredient shots or of the product, macro, those are all great. What I wanna see, I would love to see here is this being the packaging, I want, I would love for that to be your first image or having the box with a scoop of the actual product outside of it. So then you're getting double information. Like if you had a scoop right here, that would tell people exactly like, all right, this is the packaging, this is the contents of it. And then you can have your carousel go through other images, right? So when it comes to your carousel, I always tell people you want your first one to four to be your basic e-commerce images. And those e-com is just your images on white. And then your five to seven or your five to 10, however many images you have, those are gonna be your lifestyle photos. And those are the really inspiring ones where you might have them in a kitchen, might have somebody actually making the matcha. You have that interaction to get people excited. So I would look at just what we have here and where we can provide more value because seeing this is amazing. I love to get that kind of information, tell people exactly what is inside the packaging. This is a really good product shot. The shadowing on the side is great, all of that. Then we get to the cup. This kind of feels like a stock image. I would love to see the cup with maybe the product and just keeping that product placement throughout and expand from four to maybe seven photos. But the fact that you have this image, I think is really great. And I would keep that kind of information going throughout all of your store galleries. Same comment right there. I feel like this is just kind of coming through my head, but like I feel like you could use these kind of like circles of the loose leaf tea as like icons or something really fun. It might work and it might not, but I just it popped in my head. So it could be kind of it could be fun. That's a really nice image. I love the reflection. Anything with glass reflection, it's really in right now. This goes back to what I, me and Jordan were talking about with your angles. I would switch these two photos, which also means for the layout, switching those two. But just because everything is pointing down to the right, I want T wear to be on this side. So then everything is pointing towards the actual copy. Then we got some blog imagery here. Customer photos. I love customer photos. There's not much you can do about the how those come out, but they do look nice. And that is your full landing page. Do you have any questions on that, Michael? Oh, very helpful and actionable. I really appreciate it. I, I know that we needed a lot of work to do to optimize the site. So yep. suggestions you gave are very helpful. Perfect. Yeah. And if you want me to go through more of that with you on another time, I'm happy to do so. Thank you. Yeah, a question in the chat as well to ask, what is a good carousel account? So those secondary images on like a product page, what do you mean? Or I guess, Regina, you're looking for like a, on like this hero image rotation or on a product page? No, I was just responding at the moment. Carrington was saying, you know, like your first one to four should be your basic five to mm -hmm. seven should be lifestyle. Um, I guess that's the answer. It should be seven. But I, just, <laughs> I was just kind of saying like, what, what is too many? What's the total amount that pictures that you should have in a carousel? Yes. Yeah, so I don't think there's a limit to how many you can have. 
but there is usually a limit to how many times somebody will scroll and look through. Seven is a very safe number and it's a good average. I have seen brands who have done like 15 to 20 before, but the problem is those ones at the end, people don't usually see. So are they really adding? I think right at, at, at 20, as an example, I mean, what right. more do you have to say? So right. like, you know, like, or yeah, right. so right. seven seems reasonable. Okay. Right. So usually it's one to four for e -com and then like five to seven, five to eight for lifestyle. And if you only have three e -com, it would be four to seven. You can vary it. I guess this is why I was asking the question because I didn't know if you were saying do like, so if I took the total of all of that, I would have potentially 11 to 12 picks altogether if I took, you know, did four basic and seven lifestyle. So, or should I just have a stream of seven total pictures? I guess is what I'm thinking. I would take each one of your product lines and say, what are the top seven photos? I need in the carousel. Okay. Once people start scrolling, you can have more images on each product page. So you can expand from there as well. There's other ways that you can use them if you have more. But if you expand on that carousel too much, you do how you are risking the opportunity for them just not to be even seen. Right. One thing I like to add to for those photos is like each one should have a specific selling point to them or reason that's going to help convince them to buy. And if you're starting to like repeat it or like this just looks nice, then it might not be as effective versus like this is showing we do X, Y, and Z. This is showing our ingredients. This is showing our packaging. This is showing right. someone appreciating mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. thinking about it in terms of like what's the what's the so what behind the photo when someone's looking at it that's going to help convince them to buy. Exactly. Thanks. Of course. Perfect. Thanks, Karen. Should we hop into join the tribe? Let's do it. All right. Join the tribe as Louise. Yes. Hi. How are so, you? I'm good. So I sell a bunch of emerging brand products, single service. So that's why it's that way. All right. So when I first come to the site, coming from somebody who now pretending like I don't know anything about what you do, it is not immediately apparent to me what this website is all about. What am I getting and why should they even be here? So I feel like we need to get a little bit of clarity on like, what are you offering people and how do we show that to make it really clear, right? And then I would also say shrink down this uh, nav area just a little bit. So then we can have more space on the website because we're not, you you have a fixed header right here. Mm -hmm. So we are reducing the amount of space you have for the actual scrolling of the screen. And it's just losing, it's just, the space you're taking up is a loss of information. Now it does not need to be as big as it is. So I would say if we just shrink your logo a little bit, you can add a lot more value in what people are scrolling through. So then here, if you can reduce the scroll of these images, I feel like they do scroll pretty quickly at first. So it's n it's harder for somebody to say, ooh, like, what does that say? What is this all about? I would say your first one needs to be very apparent on, all right, what are we getting here? Because all I see is a bunch of random products in a photo. It's not curated in a way that it's really informational or educating me on what you're selling. Does that make sense? Yes. Somebody told me today that I should actually freeze this panel also and only have the one photo to shop right away and move it so, over. To this one right here really isn't adding a ton of value, right? Mm -hmm. We can have a call out for your sale. Like you have free shipping here. We can also have a banner that calls out your sale. But like the image you have here, that's not really adding any value. I would say same with this one. So free product with your purchase, All right? So you're getting pecans. Mm -hmm. I would say show the actual product of pecans that you're getting, not like a stock imagery of pecans, unless you have like multiple brands of pecans that you're selling. Show like tell people, hey, this is the specific brand you're getting for a free product with your purchase yeah. versus saying, oh, here's a bowl of pecans. Yum, right? 
be really intentional and very clear about why you're showing them that image. Have it be directly related to the call out that you're, you're making right here. And then same, like just, you could do this with one image and then add the rest of that information lower down. So like if you make one hero image right here, that is 100%, it is a try before you buy image and it is clear as day as what people are getting. Everything else can get put down lower. Your free product with purchase, you can make that a pop-up. And then the sale, you can add a sale section lower down as well. So whoever gave you the advice on freezing your first one, I'm in a long-term way, kind of saying the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. So we scroll down here. My biggest thing right here is now I have to read. I don't mm. want to read. What here can we make like bullet points or imagery or something so I don't have to read this whole paragraph? Because the majority of people, when they come here, they're going to scroll right past this and go down here. Mm -hmm. So make this section like stupid simple for somebody to understand what you're trying to say. And maybe that's making like a grid of four. So you have your text with a photo, similar to what Michael had in one section. He had like that four. So he had the text, he had an image, and then he had text and he had an image. Mm -hmm. So other ways of laying it out. Your shop button, I feel like it's lost. Because if I just scrolled past that text, it's just gone now, right? So is it adding value in this specific spot? You definitely need the shop buttons on the page. We just need to figure out like the best use so that one doesn't get lost in this section. Okay. Right here, we're getting into a section that feels really stock heavy. I'm assuming these are all stock photos. They are. So my whole thought here and my whole belief behind stock imagery is if you're using stock imagery, spend the time to find the images that fit your brand. So they don't stand out like a sore thumb. So like the beverages one, that really stands out to me versus like the household one. That kind of, I feel like that fits the color scheme of your brand a lot better, right? So use stock imagery really strategically and also don't use the stock images that pop up on the first few pages. Use the ones that have less of a download because it's less likely that Google is going to be able to read it as a stock photo. So basically, Google has gotten a lot better at understanding, okay, this is a stock image. This is a real, actual, personalized photo. And now they're getting better at the whole AI thing. If you do have a lot of stock imagery on your website and you have a high traffic to your site, Google, once Google figures it out, they can start knocking you down on rankings for it. So having that original content is really important or use stock imagery that does not have a really high download number. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. So like there's always a place for stock imagery. I just tell people to be really strategic about how you use it. All right, so then we come down to the contact page. So overall, what I really, I feel like this, we can double the length of this landing page, right? We need more imagery to explain what it is that people are getting. So we need to educate them on what this brand is. And we also have to inspire them to want to click on all these other buttons up here. Make them want to hit shop now to learn more. I feel like that's the part that's really missing is that we're really missing the inspiration piece and we're missing the education piece. So kind of expanding, maybe even doubling the length of the homepage, I think would be really beneficial. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm writing notes copiously. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep. All right, Carrington, should we hop into the next one? Yes, who is next? It's Bake Me Healthy. All right, I'm going to skip Kimberly because I'm talking to her tomorrow. Oh, yep. Sorry, Kimberly. And you get more detailed feedback. <laughs> Lush, speedy. Okay. Lush, speedy. All right, let me find that. I don't think that was on the... Yeah, I just reposted it at the end of the chat, too. Hold on one second. Let me pull this over.
All right. Who is this one for? This one is for would be me, Sharon. Sherilyn. Sherilyn. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start with your nav because I've been starting with everyone's nav. I actually think yours is pretty good. It could be a tiny bit smaller, but I do like it. And I really like the fact, I like your logo, how it's like a leaf and a face and hair. I feel like that was, that's really nice. But I don't think it's taking up too much space. So we can still get enough room down here for your imagery. With that said, I want, I want to see more of this photo. So this is a composite. So if we can shrink down your product section right here, we can then see all of it and still get people. With it being a composite, the people feel really tiny and the bottles feel really big, right? So yeah. if we can shrink down the product and increase the people a little bit more, so then, all right, these aren't miniature tiny little people that are like ant sized and these are not <laughs> products the size of a skyscraper. Right, right. Uh, I didn't even think that. That was good. That's a good um, observation. Yeah. So that is my first piece. And then my other piece is not photo related at all. And I have yours which just posted, so I didn't have a chance to even look at this yet. So this is totally candid right now. You have a lot of fonts on your homepage right now. You have a font in your logo. You have a font on your nav. You have a Caribbean inspired as a font. Plant-based derived health hair care as a font and your shop now button is a font. Okay. I would narrow that down to two fonts. Okay. And then your text right here is actually in the photo. That is not text on the homepage. That was built into the photo in Photoshop or wherever it was made. Yeah. I would fix that right away because that text, because it's only on your image and it's not on the website, Google can't read it. So that doesn't help you from an SEO perspective at all. Google has no idea it's even there. So you, that would be technically, I don't know how much you know about websites, but that's your H1 tag. So we want that to be actual text on your website, not just in the image, because it's way better on your SEO perspective and how Google can read your site. Got it. Aaron, Dan, how do you feel about having the photo with both the bottles, the product, and the people in there? So with it being with multiple images. Yeah. So because we're doing a, this one's a composite, I understand the purpose of it. If we can create an image that has people in it, maybe using the product, I think that would be a lot stronger. Or okay. separating the two. But if we're going to keep a composite, we do need to work on those ratios so people don't look too tiny. And making sure that it's being composed in a way that's really beneficial. With the placement of your shop now button, what is a composite? So a composite is when you're combining multiple images together. So this whole green section up here, that is your background. The people are an image. The bottles are an image. And then the text is added in separately. So you're composing three different pieces together to create one final image. And then your shop now button is getting lost with the brown on brown. Okay. So I would also play with that because you, that's an important button. You don't want people to miss it. And that could even just be saying, hey, oop, we're going to move this up right under plant derived. And then it's not against the brown. I love that you have bestsellers coming right here. That works out really well. It's right at the forefront when people start scrolling. I would bump it up like halfway, bring it, bring it up to here. That's a lot of white space that is not adding you any value. Your imagery looks consistent for the space that you have. And it's good that nothing is being cut off. This image has no shadow on it. Your other three do have shadows on the bottom, which is giving them some grounding. Either way is okay. Just do it for all of them. It's a small thing, but consistency does go a really far away. So either have shadows on everything or have shadows on none of them. Okay. 
shot by hair texture. My biggest thing here is, again, going back to consistency. This image does not fit the square frame. We've got clear cutoff lines right here. We've got a clear cutoff on the curly on the bottom. And then the wavy actually fits into the square perfectly fine. So find imagery that actually fits the square because it's going to look a lot nicer. It'll feel more premium versus trying to fit a peg into a square or whatever that saying is. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that thing. That's kind of what you're doing right here. So make imagery that actually fits whatever the frame, and right now your frame is a square. So if the image doesn't fit, find a new image. This one, the curly, that will fit. You just need to make it bigger. This first one, I don't, oh, okay. you're not going to get that to fit. So this image I would replace. This one, you can just enlarge it. And then the third one is fine. Scrolling down to bundle and save. I would love to see if you could make these larger. They are bundles. So they're a lot smaller in the frame. So if we can make this section a little bit bigger, you would get a lot more information about what you're getting because when you scroll, you can't read anything on the bottle, which now means you have to read the text below it. And it's like, all right, wait, what am I getting? You have to now click to learn more versus being able to see the bottles and understand what it is and then wanting to learn more, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. adding information to say, hey, this is what it is. They know it. And now they want to learn more versus saying, I don't know what this is and I have to learn more. Do you see that distinction? Yeah. So so when you're saying making it bigger, you mean the image should should be larger than it appears right now? Yes. Okay. So a zoom in kind of zoom effect. Yep. So Carrington, these are bundles. Do you suggest then maybe instead of, is it the actual image to remove some of the white space on the left and white? Because I think that could help. And then maybe do yep. like two columns or three columns. I would say, depending on how many bundles you have, definitely remove white space over here if you can, and then stack them. So if you only have four, do it in a square, two and two. If when you click view all, if there's multiple bundles and you want to do three and three, all right, you have, you have five. Well, that's an awkward number. We can do two, two, one, three, two. There's different ways. We, it's five. But it could be more rows. You could do more rows, yes. So because we're, when we click view all, you have five bundles. Mm -hmm. We're showing four of them. So okay. I would technically want to see all five because we're missing information on only one. It's not mm -hmm. like when you click view all and there's 15 more or you can't fit them all on the homepage. I would say, okay. hey, either we need to show all of them or show one bundle with a with more information within a view all that takes you to all five it might okay. be the top selling bundle that is like right. the entry point to get people in yep got you makes sense a so, few different ways you can go about that but the imagery is i think too small here and it's not giving people any extra real value because i don't know what the difference between any of these are Until just by you click the photos yeah. Same comment on this image right here, it's being cut off. And then these two are more of illustrations on the end, the ones that are in the green. Mm -hmm. Those stand out to me like a sore thumb because you don't really have any other illustration style imagery on the site. So if we can find a way to show that with actual photos, I think that'd be beneficial for you because it does stand out. Okay. That's a nice photo of you. Thank you. And then same comment I've given everyone on the bottom. Those are all fine. I like that you guys are adding the images to the bottom. And that concludes your homepage. Thank you. Perfect. I think that's great. Let me drop the next one in. OK, so it's the last one that's in the chat. Okay. All right. Whose is this? John. Hey, John. Yeah. 
All right. How do you pronounce this? This is Chibari, Chibari Foods. All right, Chibari. I would have butchered that if I didn't ask, so I'm glad I did. All right. I think you have the best nav so far out of everyone. They're both nice and narrow and not taking up too much space. So, yay. Great. Thank you. I, I love this photo. I don't love that I can't see the whole thing. I want to see the whole bar. This is what we're selling. So this is the most important part of this picture. I love that they are smiling, but I don't like that this is cut off because we, when somebody comes to the site, I want it to be clear as day why they're here, what they're buying, what the product is, and not having a school to figure that out, right? So if we can, even just using this section of the photo, even though their faces are cut off, you can use this image elsewhere that shows the full image. Um, and then having a call to action. There's no call to action here to say information about the brand, a button to your shop page, or any extra information. So I would say this in this specific photo, that kind of hits your inspire section. Like, ooh, like this is really nice. But we're missing that education point. And that would be like if, if you could add text right over here or on the side somewhere to tell people a little bit more about the brand. This is a fun photo. I would say bring this text more centered because there's a lot of dead space right here. So you can just move that down so we're not wasting all that space. But I like the movement of this. We can also bring it in more because there's a lot of space in here. And because we have so many moving parts, it would fit nicely just to kind of like condense it in a little bit closer together to say, hey, this text is part of the blueberry, right? I don't know if blueberry specifically matters for the text here, but that is the one that we're being featured. But I do like what's happening within the photo. Your icons are very cute. All right, your starter pack. I'm just scrolling through these really quickly because I haven't seen them yet. All right. So the starter pack. One thing I feel like we could add here is the packaging. What is the box they're receiving all of this in? So I love images like this where they're kind of laid out. It's also really busy as a first photo. And I don't think this specific image screams starter pack. I think this photo screams, here's our product line versus starter pack. I think your images for the product are really nice. I do think you could crop them in more. I don't think all of the extra space, you can make this more of like a square come in a lot closer on the top and make it so your product is taking up more of that frame, just as if you're zooming in more. Imagine it that way. And I think that for both of these would be really beneficial. But I like that they you have a nice pop of color. I love that it's showing the ingredients and that it's aligned with the rest of the branding for this. This one took me a second when I looked at it. It's a little trippy almost, but I do like it. I wanna see more though. So we have four photos right here. I would love to see more along with starter pack packaging. I would love to see just the packaging on white. Take the bar out and just show us what the bar looks like and then get in, then you have some of the more fun images and maybe get a hand in there. Have somebody like actually opening it or a hand holding it so then you get scale. If you put this product in somebody's hand, they know exactly how big it is. And that's another piece of education, right? They know the size of it, which can often be really misleading inside of photos. Yeah, this is what I meant. Like if we zoom in a little bit more, I think that works out so much better. 
it's just it's more clear it's more in your face and i like that so i agree with my statement from earlier <laughs> all right these are the same images from before i don't know why this one has a white background and these have yellow but the old one has blue i would keep with consistency on that it might be nice to have them both on white since your yellow is different and that one's changing. You could do it that way. Overall, I think we need just more variety of photos. So you have a solid one, two, three, four, like six photos right now on your homepage that are just kind of scattered throughout. I think we need to expand on your on the images that you're using to just provide more information get people more excited about it, right? Because we're starting to hit that point where we're reusing images. And I don't mind reusing images if we're going from the home page to the shop page or the home page to your about us page. Because now we're hitting different pages. But when we're repeating images on the home page, that's when I say, all right, we need to expand our image database right there. Is that helpful? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Is there any, are there any schools of thought around using, clearly this is a lifestyle image on, on the landing page here, but are there any schools of thought about overuse of lifestyle images on product pages? Should that just exclusively be product shots themselves? No, I definitely, it's like you're saying, like using them here. Right. No, I definitely say would say to use them on your shop page as well. So kind of what I was saying before when we were talking about your carousel imagery, these are your e-commerce images. These are the ones that are on white. This one, you could actually make that bigger. But the, you should have your first three, at least, be your basic e-com photos. And then we expand out to your more fun lifestyle images. I do like that you have your nutrition facts. But right here, you... I would definitely say if we can even add somebody holding the product and it's just like a hand going into the frame, holding it, or you can get a lifestyle where somebody is like biting it or opening it, eating it, taking it out of this box right here. There's so many things that you can do that just even including a hand or a full body. And you could add another like three or four images to your carousel. And that would really take it to the next level. And those images would also be able to be used on your homepage. Okay, great. Thank you. Sweet. All right, perfect. I think the last one that we had was for Sabale Tease, but she actually just mentioned she has to jump off for a call right now, but she'll follow up with you, Karen Tim, after um, to maybe schedule a one on one. Um, so I think this is perfect time. This is super helpful, and I love everyone's comments in chat. In the chat, as Carolyn, as Karen did mentioned, um, if you want to go deeper into uh, what she talked about, look through your site and come up with specific areas that um, she recommend helping with your imagery and photography. Reach out, Karen. Do you want to put your email address in the chat? Doing that right now. And then, yeah, it would be super helpful. As I mentioned, I've worked with Carrington to do some product photography for the Joyful Co sites. We're actually rolling that out for our holiday landing pages in a couple of months, um, and they turned out really great. And so not only is she an amazing photographer, but also understands the e-commerce conversion factor behind it, as you've just heard over the past hour, so that you can actually not just have great looking images, but effective educational and inspirational images as well. Perfect. So, Any closing thoughts? My email and a link to book a call with me, if that is easier, is in the chat. So you can either, you can choose whatever you, whatever works for you. I'm happy to talk with any of you. And I appreciate you guys spending the last hour with me and listening to me ramble on about some imagery. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for joining. And thanks everyone else for joining as well. Thanks for having me.